Greetings, everybody. We're here to answer the age-old question of, do dogs have wings? My name is Paul, and this is the Reformed Tolkienian. One of the most memorable scenes from Lord of the Rings, both in the books themselves and also the films, is the scene of Gandalf making his brave stand against the Balrog and Moria. The massive creature even causes the orcs to tremble with fear. It is wrapped in flame and horrible in its power and terror. It is a scene not easily forgotten, and the battle that rages between the wills of Gandalf and the Balrog is spectacular to behold. But let us pause right there and wonder aloud, how do we picture the Balrog? If you pictured it having wings, there are many who say that you are wrong. And the debate has been going on for some time, and fervently at times, between the wings and no wings parties. But Paul, you say, I've seen the movie. Balrogs clearly have wings. In fact, the 1978 film, The Balrog Had Wings, and countless artist renditions of the Balrogs, they have wings. The problem comes because of a rare case of Tolkien's language being ambiguous, and frustratingly, it is ambiguous in more than one place. First is the very scene in The Fellowship of the Ring. The text does, in fact, say, It stepped forward slowly onto the bridge, and suddenly it drew itself up to a great height, and its wings were spread from wall to wall. Well, that seems to settle it, but a mere two paragraphs before, it is described like this. Gandalf's enemy halted again, facing him, and the shadow about it reached out like two vast wings. The No Wings Party thereby credibly claims that the wings are a simile to describe how the shadows look around the beast, and that the following passage continues that imagery. So with this passage being unable to settle the matter, we turn elsewhere in Tolkien's work where Balrogs are discussed. In Appendix A, for instance, the Balrog is described as flying from Thangorodrim, and some say that this suggests wings. But this helps us less than the scene in Moria did. Flying is often used in Tolkien to describe very fast travel. In the very scene at the bridge of khazad Gandalf tells the rest of the party, a party lacking in wings, to, quote, fly, you fools. In Morgoth's ring, there's a more clear quote. Swiftly they arose, and they passed with winged speed over Hithlam, and they came to Lamoth in a tempest of fire. But again, winged speed might just be a metaphor for how quickly they were traveling. If you were coming over and you arrived very, very quickly, and I said, Wow, you must have flown here. I'm not literally suggesting that they, that they flew here. It's a figure of speech. So the case for wings on the Balrog relies on several texts that are ambiguous, but still lean toward Balrogs having wings. However, the strongest argument against them having wings is simply the way that they are killed. Two Balrogs are killed by being thrown down from a great height. Gandalf kills the one in Moria that way, and in the Silmarillion, Glorfindel kills a Balrog in the exact same way, by falling with it from a very high place. It seems at very least that if the Balrog has wings, it cannot fly, which negates the passages about wing speed or flying to a location and leaves us only with the scene in Moria. So at the end of the day, which is it? Well, unfortunately, I don't think that the text itself can give us an absolute definitive answer. Personally, I think that Balrogs do have wings but are unable to fly, but I believe that the no wings case is a very good and compelling one. So we're not going to end this debate uh, here today, but I do appreciate you watching. Tune in next time for the Reformed Tolkienian. Until then, see you later.